The Trip Report community on YouTube is a very special group of people. We can all come on here and talk about certain drug experiences we have had, whether it's good or bad. My channel focuses on the horror part of it, not only for entertainment, but to educate and warn people about what could possibly happen if you are not careful. There are countless trip reports on the internet coming from many different websites, Blue Light, Drugs Forum, Shroomery, hell, even Reddit has some really good ones, including my very own community dedicated specifically for trip reports. But there is one that stands out among the rest and has been king ever since it was created, and that's Arrowid. Arrowid or Arrowid Center was developed by two individuals that go under the pseudonym of Fire Arrowid and Earth Arrowid. I could not find their real names on the limited websites the resources were available on. Fire is the executive director and head archivist of the website. She does many things, including being the site's primary information architect, designer, and editor, as well as being responsible for fundraising and budget management. She has more than 20 years experience studying psychoactive plants and drugs. She has written thousands of pages of information about these materials, authored numerous articles, received multiple awards, spoken at academic and professional conferences, and has had her work cited by newspapers, education programs, college classes, and seminars around the world. Earth Arroyd is the technical director and chief software engineer. He designs and implements the custom software systems necessary for managing the large flow of information through the site and is the lead editor responsible for scientific information published by Arrowid. He has worked in the field of psychoactive information distribution for more than 18 years and has written extensively on the topic. He has co-authored academic posters, been published in both large and small publications, and has been interviewed by major news organizations about his work. These two smart and intuitive individuals work together to create the largest database for trip reports. In 1993, Earth and I moved to the Midwest. We had switched the year before from local bulletin boards and nationwide networks such as CompuServe and Genie to a direct internet connection through a technology company Earth worked for. We both had an existing interest in psychoactives and had just graduated from a small very liberal college where the use of psychedelics and MDMA was a relatively common experience. But we kept to the sidelines, watching and listening as others experimented. This combination of anti-drug scare stories and a lack of solid accessible information made it very difficult to come to any sort of rational conclusion about these substances. I used a month-long independent study period to research and write about the plants associated with European witchcraft, but even this relatively well-documented topic was a challenge to research in our small college library. By late 1994, when we moved to the San Francisco Bay Area, the web was starting to take hold. User-friendly graphical browsers replaced text-only interfaces, greatly expanding the possibilities for online data sharing. Hyperreal's drug archives, a centralized selection of FAQs and Usenet posts, became the most popular source of information about psychoactives on the new web. In March of 1995 was when Earth and Fire both came up with the name Arrowhead through both brainstorming and just playing with words. Earth studied historical linguistics in college, so they used the knowledge that he had learned to find the perfect name for the website. Then, out of the blue while having a brainstorming session in the car, Fire just had a refreshing moment of clarity where the name Arrowhead came up, or maybe came to? This name was based off the Proto-Indo-European roots that they were researching previously. The actual meaning of Arrowhead is Earth Wisdom, or the Knowledge of Existence. They then registered the domain a month later. It's pretty cool to hear how such an iconic name for a website that meant so much to me and probably many of you was conceived. By October of that year, they publicized a small but readily available website, although did not submit it to search engines. They really had no intention of making it such a huge website the way it has been the past 20 plus years. It started to be requested more when people found the practice pages that had very useful information. These intrigued individuals were either on Usenet or an email list and they would ask a question that was answered on one of their pages, so they would send them the URL. More and more people started suggesting links and topics, therefore making the to-do list pile up. 
At this point in time, it was mainly used for nerds who were interested about the latest news on DMT or ketamine. In March of 1996, they began submitting it to search engines, and the traffic grew from 100 page views daily to 1,000 by the end of the year. This is when they decided to broaden their scope because many visitors had no knowledge in anything about the website, so they created sections more dedicated to common substances like cocaine, heroin, amphetamine, and alcohol. They didn't start adding caution to the website until an experience happened at Burning Man in 1996. They watched their risk-taking friend try GHB for the first time. She subsequently passed out, vomited, and convulsed for several hours. This was what made them realize that they needed to pass along information, so stuff like that doesn't happen again. A realization they made during this period was that the prohibition of recreational drug creates a huge market pressure for new psychoactives that are not strictly illegal and more difficult to detect. When they'd go to places like Burning Man and other events like that, they'd find people who'd sell or even give away chemicals they had only ever read about. While the resources available on the web were growing, most information about these uncommon chemicals still traveled by word of mouth, even among medical personnel. Having this way of communication about very unknown drugs was a problem, and they needed to fix it. It wasn't only affecting people who were taking the drugs, but the ones who had to treat them. They realized they needed to build lines of communication with experts and community members, talk with writers and publishers, physicians, researchers, drug treatment professionals, teachers, parents, and teens. They met Alexander and Ann Shulgin at the Entheobotany Conference in San Francisco in October of 1996. They are both some of the most celebrated people in the psychedelic community with their books and research on psychoactive chemicals. Meeting them gave inspiration to Earth and Fire's growing interest in the subject matter. Over the next couple of years, they worked on Arrowwood in their spare time, filling in the basics while continuing to keep track of the cutting edge. To continue making money, they took on a variety of contract jobs, including technical and editing work for the Council on Spiritual Practices, CSP, which is an organization bringing together religious scholars, scientists, and spiritual guides who share a mutual interest in the importance of direct experience of the sacred dimension. Arrowhead continued to grow. Near the end of 1997, traffic reached 4,000 page hits per day and were exceeding their bandwidth limitations. They then met someone that a mutual friend introduced them to, named Brian Bellendorf, who ran the server that hosted the Hyperreal drug archives. He offered to host Arrowhead on the Hyperreal server, allowing for the site to expand while actually lowering the costs. They moved Arrowhead to the Hyperreal server in January of 1998. This is when it became too much of a hassle working on their other jobs, so they decided to work on Arrowhead full time, and in 1999 began asking for donations, which still keeps the website afloat today. At first, it didn't seem realistic to live off the donations, but with some fundraising efforts, it could be possible. They also began working with the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies on a variety of educational and informational projects. In October of 1999, the site was at 2,500 pages of data, and Earth joined fire in March of 2000. At this point, traffic doubled from 50,000 to 100,000 page hits per day. In May 2001, after looking into a number of options, they launched the print newsletter Arrowhead Extracts in order to give Arrowhead a physical presence and offer people a recurring reason to join and support the site. Arrowhead received its first two mentions in peer-reviewed journals and two different articles discussing the growth of online information about disapproved psychoactives. They were also invited to speak publicly for the first time, and they kind of felt out of place since they didn't see themselves as experts on psychoactives, rather more as archivists and librarians. In January 2002, the site hit an average of 250,000 page views per day. In May, they were invited to speak at a small National Institute on Drug Abuse conference. Speaking there was one of the first very clear acknowledgments that Arrowhead was a resource, not only for psychoactive users, but also for people in the fields of healthcare, law, and public policy. Then, in September of 2002, their good friend and largest funder, Bob Wallace, died unexpectedly. This one tragic event led to the loss of nearly half their yearly support, this made them rethink the funding model. They continued to work full-time on the project. 
This website started off as a hobby that had turned into a crowded home office, seven computers, a living room full of books, a shipping room for managing membership gifts and newsletters, and a garage full of supplies. Sylvia Thyssen, who joined earlier to work on document editing, site updates, and volunteer management, became an integral part of the team. Although volunteers have always been a major part of Arrowhead, they are now more involved than ever in the editing and publishing process. In the spring of 2005, they began the work of becoming a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which is a portion of the U.S. Internal Revenue Code that allows for federal tax exemption of nonprofit organizations that meet the code's requirements. These nonprofits may be considered public charities, private foundations, or private operating foundations. During this time, they were at 45,000 visitors and had 450,000 page hits per day, estimating the total to be around 10 million visitors that year. According to SEMrush.com, Arrowhead has 3.5 million visits in the month of November of 2023. That's an insane jump from 2005 where they were getting 10 million in one full year. This website has been very popular for lots of people for a very long time. I remember the day I found it many years ago, seeing all the experiences people wrote for drugs I was interested in learning about. I couldn't have started this channel without the help of this wonderful site. Shout out to Earth and Fire Man. The most popular feature on the website are the experiences that anyone can submit. It's definitely a process to be approved though because anyone can just write a story, it might not even be real. This is why when I read stories from Arrowhead, in every video someone comments about how it's fake is just super annoying at this point because these stories are basically approved by experts and professionals. So with all due respect, no disrespect there, please shut the fuck up. Thank you, Tony Soprano. What's really great about these experiences is that you can read about drugs you have never even heard of and get a glimpse into what it may feel like if you choose to partake in doing them one day, or you at least get a better understanding of it. Users also put their weight and gender down because that is also important when taking drugs. If a 300 pound male is doing 400 milligrams of DXM, it may not be as strong as if a 95 pound female is doing the same dose. There are currently almost 42,000 reports. The online library of Arrowhead contains over 63,000 documents related to over 350 psychoactive substances, including images, research summaries and abstracts, FAQs, media articles, experience reports, information on chemistry, dosage, effects, law, health, traditional and spiritual use, and drug testing. Arrowhead also runs Drugs Data, formerly Ecstasy Data, an independent laboratory drug checking program co-sponsored by Isomer Design and Dance Safe, which monitors the quality of American street ecstasy. Launched in July 2001, its purpose is to collect, manage, review, and present laboratory pill testing results from a variety of organizations. Tablets of street ecstasy can be anonymously submitted to a DEA licensed laboratory for testing, and then photos of the tablets and GC and MS test results are published on the project's website. Drugs Data has published testing results for nearly 3,000 samples. Testing costs have sometimes been covered by project funding, and at other times are covered by those who submit tablets for testing. Arrowhead and the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies collaborated on two large reference database projects. Arrowhead has provided expertise in work developing and coordinating construction of an online psychoactive drug reference library, and MAPS has published a similar collection. Arrowhead also archives and provides access to thousands of older texts in their online and physical libraries. By collecting and making these texts available, they attempt to promote an understanding of the changing context surrounding the use of psychoactive drugs. Now, of course, with this type of subject matter, Arrowhead has had a bit of controversy over the years. The site has drawn praise and criticism from both the media and medical officials. American physician and broadcaster Dina Dell often recommends Arrowhead to listeners interested in learning about drugs and drug use. On the other hand, Edward Boyer, an emergency room physician and toxicologist, while admitting that Arrowhead has a plethora of useful information, once argued the site may cause more harm than good to potential drug users. Though Boyer has since come to cautiously admire Earth and Fire and no longer refers to their site as partisan, he still argues that Arrowhead minimizes adverse effects and includes too much dodgy and potentially harmful data in its quest to present all sides. 
Airwit is so comprehensive and so much of the information is correct that unless you're an expert in medical toxicology, you may miss the dangerous information that's close to the surface. While I don't agree at all with what he says, it's not going to change the fact that the website will have many people either support it or hate it. What's funny is that Russia has totally banned this site. If you haven't donated to this wonderful site yet and you want to, I will leave the link in the description below. The website has helped countless people and will continue to. Other than Wikipedia or typing symptoms that you're having and adding Reddit to the end of it, Arrowit is one of the most useful sites on the internet. I just wanted to make this video to show my appreciation and love for a website that has done the same to me over the years. I can't imagine how many lives Earth and Fire have saved with the important information they have collected and published for everyone to see. I hope you all enjoyed, and I want to give thanks to Opium for lending her voice for this video, and go subscribe to her. Enjoy the rest of your day, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Peace out.